Everyone else missed this, and I can't believe it. After trading crypto for the last seven years, what initially was confusing and senseless has slowly become so much easier than I ever realized. And I'm going to show you everything that points to why the week of October 6, 2025 will be the exact week that Bitcoin is going to hit the next all-time high of $173,779. And I'm going to do it in less than 17 minutes. Yes, I'm serious. And yes, I am cocky. And you'll be cocky too once you you figure out just how easy this is. There are lots of graphs and drawings and charts and plots and pi cycle highs and log band rainbows. You get the picture. Everyone in crypto has a chart to fit their bias and their narrative to make sense of the noise. And honestly, it does make sense. For the most part, crypto is a brand new asset class and Bitcoin leading the charge still has so little chart history. The desire to make sense out of price action seems too simple for most. So they go out of their way to make these fancy charts with backfitted calculations and permutations to fit their bias. And while I have to admit that there are some really pretty colors in those charts, it really doesn't have to be that hard. And I'm going to prove it to you. For this video, we're going to be looking at Bitcoin on Bitstamp. I know that there's a Bitcoin index and it goes back even farther, but that doesn't matter because the earlier data for Bitcoin is irrelevant because a new asset with no prior history can do whatever it wants. It's a baby. And we don't want to look at the baby price action. We want to look at more mature price action. So that's why we're looking at Bitstamp. We're going to measure from the first all-time high that we're calling our first all-time high in November 2013. And we're going to measure it all the way to the all-time high that we saw in December 2017. When we measure the amount of time, it's 1,477 days, 211 weeks. It sounds like a lot. Just focus on the 211 bars. If we do that same thing, measuring the all-time high in December 2017, all the way to the all-time high in November 2021, we get 204 bars. 11 bars, two and four bars, seven weeks, or almost two months away from basically doing the exact same thing. If we plot out 204 bars and 211 bars, it gives us a range of the week of October 6th, 2025, all the way up to November 24th, 2025. Now here's where things get interesting. It's not just about measuring the all-time high to the all-time high, because anyone can do that. What I haven't seen anyone do is something that's so stupid simple that it's actually embarrassing. When we measure the amount of time from the market low. And this is something that we can trace on every single bull market. Every top has a drop. And the drop right here in January 2015, all the way to the all-time high of this market cycle was 152 bars. Guess what? It was 152 bars from the 2018 bottom here in December, all the way to our all-time high in November 2021. 152 bars, 152 bars. The bottom is in already, long gone back in November 2022, 152 bars out puts us exactly on the week of October 6th, 2025. Now, there's a lot of time, though, that happens right between here and here. So stay tuned if you want to know exactly what to do during this period of 54 weeks or basically a year to figure out how you're going to handle this. Before I get there, I want to come back here to this first market that we measure. See this little measurement right here? It says bars till retrace back to one. What that means is that this is a measurement of time to figure out how long did it take for the price of Bitcoin to reach the all-time high. And it took 169 bars. Don't worry about how many weeks that is. Don't worry about figuring out how many years that is, whatever. It's 169 bars. When we look at the next cycle, it was less. The next cycle only took 157 bars for the price to return back to its all-time high. Now, we should expect that this cycle's retrace back to the one should be less. We had 169 bars, 157 bars, there's a problem here. It only took 121 bars. Now, it doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but that is a huge drop. 169 weeks, 157 weeks, 12 weeks difference. That's like three months difference. 157 weeks down to 121 weeks. That is a major, major difference. Nine months, essentially. What happened is that the Bitcoin spot ETF made everything happen way too fast. Everything is extremely ahead of schedule. Now, I want to show you something else. And this time, we're not going to be looking at this, but we will bring it up in retrospect. Fibonacci retracements are one of the best things to ever happen in crypto for 
many, many reasons. One of the main and primary reasons why Fibonacci retracements are so useful is that they do two things. When we use Fibonacci retracements, we want to figure out where the price was and how low it dropped. And that will give us an idea of where there might be levels of resistance or support on the way up. That's as simple as I'm going to make it. The second reason why Fibonacci extensions are great, which is not part of the retracements, but it's the numbers that go above or beyond the one, give us future price plots where there should be future resistance. Going back over here, I have lots and lots and lots of FIPS. What I want to do first is I want to show you the 2018 Fibonacci retracement. When I say keeping it simple, this is as simple as it gets. We measure the top to the drop. We can see that there are clear points of resistance and support that the price respects, specifically $13,000 and $9,000, just short of $10,000, which was resistance. And then right here, you can see resistance also flipped to support. Then the parabola. A parabola refers to a measurement, a chart that is moving up at an extreme vertical angle, really high, really fast. When we see parabolas on trading charts, this is a time that we should label as euphoria. This is max greed. This is where things are getting out of control quickly. And things go up way higher, way faster than people are prepared for. Everyone is expecting a dip and they want to buy in the dip, but the dip never comes because the price keeps shooting up higher and higher and higher. This will happen again. I fully expect it to, and so should you. There was resistance at $32,442. You can see right here, the price closed on the weekly. It did move above the next week, but notice where it started, where it ended, and it came back down. It struggled in this range of $32,000, so much so that this level was also support in the previous bear market summer of 2021. Where did the price also stop? It stopped at $61,000. What was the all-time high of our previous market? Well, it was about $69,000. But Fibonacci extensions can plot out future points of resistance that are extremely valuable to give us an idea as investors and traders where the price could experience some friction. It could be a little bit tricky. So this is not exclusive just to the 2018 bull market. We can actually measure out the 2014 market and we can use Fibonacci extensions, which means that we're not looking at any of the numbers from the top to the drop, but everything moving up. And by the way, I am using a logarithmic chart, which is really important. And I'm also using a log logarithmic setting here on the Fibonacci extension of the retracement drawing. Now, what I want you to see is magic because as the price goes up, we see it break through the 272, but it finds it as support. We see it break through the 1618 right there and it struggles, but it bounces above. Interesting that there's resistance here at the 272 and the 618. What happens here at the two, it blows right through, blows, oh, goes through the 2.272. There's our resistance point. It proves to be resistance week over week over week and the price falls down and it hits right here on our $8,000 mark. It goes a lot lower. That's fine. We're going to get to that in a second. But it comes back up and it's struggling around this point of $8,000. Even as the price solidifies, it still can't get above that level until finally it breaks. And what happens when it breaks? It goes down to $3,000, give or take. What happens here though? I just want you to see this. This is a drawing from 2014. Keep it in mind. We see resistance, 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 resistance. Finally, the price shoots above, right above resistance. Now it's support. Guess where the price is going to find a little a bit of resistance. That's right. At $8,000 price finds resistance right there. Does it push up higher? Yes, it does. Does it touch the 272? No, it doesn't. But guess what? It finds support on the previously broken line. This happens over and over and over again. Even the COVID crash falls right into a Fibonacci extension level from the 2014 market. I am literally giving you gold right now. No one else is talking about this. No one else is sharing it because no one else sees it and no one else wants everyone else to know the big secret, which is what this is. After the COVID crash recovery, the price stumbles and tries to push above 88.75. It finally does, but it's having a real hard time bouncing off of that level for this entire period. 10 weeks, it's struggling, but it's holding that as support. Price moves up, moves up. We finally have a push higher. So we see the price move up to the previous all-time high. Then we keep going. Guess what? The price hits are 2.618 at 30K. Very interesting, especially been trading for a while. And it stumbles a little bit here, just like what happened in the 2016 and 2017 team markets. Interesting. Price goes up and it doesn't meet our three, which is at $67,000. But guess what happens in the bear market summer? It comes right down here to the 2618 at $31,161. Do you see how simple this is? You thought it was harder, didn't you? Price comes up. It wicks. It pierces 
reaches the 3, making an all-time high at 69k. Price falls down. Guess where it finds support? It finds support just above $31,000. Guess where it breaks and it can't go back above $31,000? Guess what is down here? $15,000. We think it's the bottom here in June. We're wrong. The price bottoms out on the FTX collapse and it falls right to the 2.2. 272. I know I sound like a crazy man. And you know what? If you didn't have the chart and you weren't looking at this, you would think I'm crazy too. But who's the crazy one now? You are for not using this chart and for not seeing this. I want you to pay attention to the end of this video because there's even more. It's not as hard as you think it is. 15K, the FTX fallout, the bankruptcy, price falls down, price bounces off here. Guess what? $31,000 happens to be resistance. The price struggles over and over to break above $31,000 over and over in 2020. 23, find support, and guess what? It breaks above with the news of the BTC ETF. Price continues to rip higher. Where does it actually make an all-time high as of the filming of this video? 73,000, about 74,000. Where does the price actually struggle though? 67K. And this brings us up to the as of the filming of this video. We even have weekly candles that are going right there to 67K. Next week, doing a lot of nothing. Next week, it drops from there. The purpose of using Fibonacci retracement is twofold. One, to let us know when we have a pullback, the market falls down, that we can get these targets on the way up that we'll probably see resistance. And two, to get Fibonacci extension levels to find out future areas of resistance. Now, let's bring back our all-time high to all-time high chart. And let's zoom out. We are under the impression that our all-time high is going to happen the week of October 6th, 2025, about a year from the filming of this video. We have other confidence based off the measurement of the all-time low per this 2014 market cycle to the all-time high high 2017, all-time low 2018, all-time high 2021, all-time low 2022, all-time high probably going to be the week of October the 6th, 2025. Now let's talk price. This is where things get a little bit iffy because there's no real way as confident as I am to say that specific price and I'll show you why I believe it's going to be that exact price, but there's really no way to know exactly what it's going to be. We have a general idea, a general range. I know where it's not going to be on either side of the spectrum. So let's just make things again really simple. Remember this idea with the 2018 market? The idea with this Fibonacci retracement is to help us figure out and to plot where there's going to be areas of resistance and support as the price has already made the high to the low. It accurately marked out the all-time high and where we found support. It showed support here, showed resistance here at 32k. And by the way, that lines up beautifully with the 2014 FIBs. I'm getting ahead of myself, but hopefully you can see it. Now we're above the 1.618. That's great. So what do I think is going to happen next is if we do the same thing and we draw from 2021's November high to 2022's low, it gives us the 1272 and the 1618 level at $100,000, specifically $103,611. And you better bet your bottom dollar that there's going to be resistance and a lot of friction at 100K. Do not for one minute think that the price is just going to blow through $100,000 like it's a wet tissue. Nope, there's going to be a lot of resistance there. However, we have a high here and it says 173779 dollars. It's really not that hard. When we layer in the 2018 FIBs, we have a level in the middle at 123,000. We'll probably see some resistance there. 2014 seems to agree with 2018 that 117 to 123k probably going to be an area of resistance. Now here's a reality check. If we use the 2014 FIBs, we can clearly see that the price broke through two Fibonacci levels. It would be egregious of us if we for one minute believe that, okay, well, since it went up two FIB levels or FIB extensions last time, it's going to do two this time and it's going to end at $237,000. Uh, no, every single time Bitcoin makes a new all-time high, there are diminishing returns. Diminishing returns are simply explained such as, as the price matures over time, it's not going to make these extreme price drops every single time. If you measure the low to the high of the 2015 market to the 2017 market, it's 10,000 plus percent for Bitcoin. If you measure the 2018 low to the 2021 high, that range is probably around a couple hundred percent. It's big. So that leads me to believe that we're not going to see an amazing increase on Bitcoin this time around, barring some sort of worldwide financial collapse. So 237, that's kind of out of the cards for me. I don't see it as realistic. I do believe though that 173,000 is a realistic top. Another thing that leads me to believe that that's a realistic top is that if we simply measure out and look at support and resistance levels on the chart for Bitcoin, we can see that no prior resistance level, which is in yellow, the high has never ever come anywhere close to that level of resistance. Bitcoin did not make a high at $4.4 million in 20 2018 or 2017. That's stupid to assume that. But note, 
that we have the high here. This one's a little bit tricky, but we have a high here in April, 70K or so, but nowhere near the previous high. That aligns with the concept. Over here, we have resistance because what we saw was a double top essentially right here and right here. So we have resistance that's going to be tricky at $90,000 or so. By the time we get there, it'll be around $100,000 in my opinion. So it'll still be tricky. But my theory of where we're going to stop $173,000 is well below where I think it's going to happen. So here's October 6th, 2025. Here's $173,000 well below overhead resistance. This is a plausible price target for Bitcoin. Now you know why all signs are pointing to October 6th, 2025 as being the date of the next all-time high for Bitcoin. But to be honest, the price could go a little higher or lower than the target I shared in this video, but that's price action for you. The main thing to keep in mind is that when we get to the last stage of the bull run, the parabola will happen faster than anyone will be prepared for. And my best advice to you is to start preparing now, whether that's revisiting your crypto portfolio allocation, investing in your trading skills through courses we have at The Better Traders, or learning how to use Altrady, which in my mind is the best third-party crypto trading platform in existence to both protect your portfolio and maximize your profits. We still have about a year to prepare for the next all-time high for Bitcoin and the crypto market, but it's going to go by fast. The choices, actions, and decisions you make now can make the difference between a Prius and a Porsche. So for those of you that are ready to take it up a notch and get serious, watch this video on how to get rich in the 2024 crypto bull run, which honestly applies to any bull run in crypto from this point on. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.